Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My name is Edward Gardiner, and I was a disciple of Prophet T.B. Joshua for over 16 years at the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm here today to speak the truth in love, to set people free. Let me take you to the scriptures. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So then Jesus Christ and the Word of God are one. To know the truth is to know Jesus Christ. And as he himself says in the book of John 8, verse 31 to 32, if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. I pray that these words today will set you free from the deception, the lies, the false accusation, and the slander which has been cast on Prophet TB Joshua and the Synagogue Church of All Nations and his discipleship program by the BBC Africa and Open Democracies documentary series. I pray you would do what the Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Test all things, hold fast what is good. So where shall I start? Let me start from Prophet TB Joshua himself. In my 16 years as a disciple of Prophet TB Joshua, I can honestly say, and I am proud to say, that I have never met a man as full of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the humility, and the self-control of the Holy Spirit. Each of these fruit were evident in his life. His self-control was evident in how he rigorously disciplined his body with prayer and with fasting under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit. I mean under the instruction and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He didn't rely on his own understanding and his own strength. He did things as the Spirit of God directed him. For those of you who have watched the Synagogue Church of All Nations services, you know they were very long. Some days they started at 6 o'clock in the morning and they could end 1 or 2 a.m. In, in the night the following day. This was because he was waiting for the Holy Spirit to say go. He wasn't presuming on his own strength or ability to minister in the house of God, but rather he has subjected and submitted himself like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 14 says, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And I want to encourage you, all true Christians and seekers of the truth in Christ who are watching this documentary, be led by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God, because God does nothing without His Word, since the Word and Christ are one. Don't let your view be formed by hearsay, by speculation, by random accusations from people you don't know and that have no credibility and no evidence to back up or substantiate their claims. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth to you as you go into the scriptures and put it before God. Ask the Holy Spirit, who was Prophet T.B. Joshua? Who was the Synagogue Church of All Nations? And what really happened there? So who was Prophet T.B. Joshua? In my experience, I have never met a person as loving, as kind, as generous, as good, and as patient and humble as Prophet T.B. Joshua. I can stand anywhere to declare that Prophet T.B. Joshua was and is a true man of God, a servant of God, and a blessing to this generation. Why do I say so? All the fruit of the Holy Spirit were present in the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua, and the Bible clearly says, by their fruit you will know them. This was his fruit. His love was evident in the way that he cared for over 400 disciples, never knowing their mother, their father, never knowing them from anywhere, not owing them anything, and yet taking it upon himself as an assignment to Jesus to train them in the way of the Lord, to build their lives, to rescue them from destruction, from darkness, from their past life, and to train them to be soldiers of Christ, releasing them into the future, the purpose and the destiny that God Almighty had for them. He never asked anything in return. He never demanded payment. He never asked us to do anything other than to believe the Word of God and to obey it. In short, he said we should make God's Word the standard for our lives. Prophet T.B. Joshua 
was a man who walked in integrity. He walked in purity, he walked in holiness, and he taught all of his followers to do the same. Now, did everyone pay attention? No. Did everyone obey the lesson? No. Just as in any school that you would find or any university, not everyone comes out with a first class degree. There are those who fail. There are those who drop out. There are those who disagree and find that this wasn't really for them and want to find their life elsewhere. There's nothing wrong with that. But you cannot use the words of those who failed, those who dropped out and those who left to judge the fruit and the production of that place. Prophet TB Joshua gave us his best. In terms of money, we never lacked anything. In terms of food, clothing, provision, we never needed anything that he hadn't given us an abundant supply of. Yes, we didn't earn a salary or a wage, but we were kept comfortable, especially if we went for a conference, we went for a crusade, we went for an assignment in other places, other cities or other countries. He took care of us abundantly. Now, the meetings were a thing of joy because when we would go there, he would give us fresh revelation that he had got from the Holy Spirit. It was often at times where he had busy, uh, he had a busy schedule when he was needing the time for other things or even to rest. That would be the time he would sacrifice to give his disciples every moment of training and teaching that he could. My personal experience of growing with Prophet TB Joshua at the Synagogue Church for Nations was that he is one of the kindest people I've ever met. And that is the truth. He would frequently ask me how I was feeling and how I was, and if there was anything he could do to help me, whereas I was there to serve him and serve Jesus. He would tell me to go and give my parents a call to find out how they were doing, and then he would listen to me reporting back how they are, if they needed anything, or if there was anything he could help them with, and he would do that. For example, when it was my father's 60th birthday, I told the prophet in advance, and he sent me home for a two-week holiday with my parents. Not only that, he sent me with $10,000 as a gift for my dad on his 60th birthday. See what I mean? This is a generous man. This is the kind of person we were living with. You never wanted for anything. You never lacked for anything. He was so concerned about our health, about our welfare. He personally paid to have a gym fully equipped and stoked in the church. One for the males and one for the females to use because he was concerned about our health. The place was so busy at the Synagogue Church of All Nations but busyness and activity is not always the same as proper exercise. So he even paid for instructors and personal trainers to come in and teach the men and teach the women how to exercise and be healthy. This is the extent of his care and extent of his love. When my mother got sick while I was a disciple, he had me call her every other day to make sure she was okay, to stand in faith with her and to pray with her. He even took time to send me to the prayer huts and he joined me to pray for my mother's healing and recovery. He was concerned not just about our discipleship and our following the path of Jesus, but in every area of our lives. And due to his example and his leadership, I now find myself living for Jesus and I want to give my life for the gospel of Jesus Christ and to lead others into the saving knowledge of the grace of God. So truly, I count it as my greatest privilege to have been a disciple of Prophet TB Joshua. I'm grateful to God. Hallelujah. At one point in my discipleship, I fell sick with malaria. It was very serious. I was constantly in nausea, vomiting, and with diarrhea. Prophet TB Joshua came and prayed for me, and I recovered the next day. After that, there was another incident where Prophet TB Joshua had arranged for disciples, as he often did, to go and have a dental checkup. On that particular checkup, they found that I needed one of my teeth to be extracted, and Prophet TB Joshua paid for the dentist to extract the tooth. However, the extraction didn't go as smoothly as it should have, and the tooth broke inside my gum, causing excessive bleeding. Now, the dentist advised me just to put a cotton swab on it and keep pressure on it, and that within an hour or two, it would subside. So we went back to the church, thinking that the blood would stop. It didn't stop. It continued flowing and flowing all night until about two o'clock in the morning. I had swallowed so much blood that I couldn't sleep. My stomach would reject it, and immediately I would vomit out this blood. I almost filled a bucket 
with my own blood. I got so weak and shaky. Other disciples in the room heard it, heard my vomiting and saw it, and they immediately went to the man of God. I thought it would be over, so I didn't bother to go and tell him. But they went and called on the man of God, and he came to me in the room and prayed for me. He then led me by the hand to his prayer room, where he prayed for me again, and instantly the bleeding stopped. He left me to rest, and within two or three days, I was back on my feet, strong and healthy again. This is another example of his care, his love, and how God Almighty used him supernaturally to take care of all of the disciples. So yes, it was a wonderful privilege, and I would say it's the greatest privilege in my life to know Prophet T.B. Joshua as my father in the Lord, as my mentor, as my friend in Christ. Sometime after, my mother fell sick again, and this time she didn't recover from it. At this time again, Prophet T.B. Joshua was so concerned about my mother's health that he had me call her to make sure she was okay, to pray with her, to read the word of God with her, and to speak words of life over her. However, when it got to a point, the prophet called me into his office and said, Edward, you need to go home and be with your mother. I've prayed and I've done everything that a servant of God can do for her, and now I need to send you. And your going will either bring the complete healing or will bring peace. So I will send you to your family now. He paid for my ticket, gave me money to give to my parents, gave me money for, to take care of me the whole time I was there, and sent me on my way. My mother passed on to glory, but truly, as he said, my, my being there gave the family peace. I was able to do the funeral and take part of the service and uh, lead a part of that, and that brought my family joy, peace, and some sense of closure that at least I was there with her at the end. When I came back to discipleship, not only Prophet T.B. Joshua, but this is where Pastor Evelyn Joshua really took me as the son she never had. And she made my life wonderful. She gave me joy. She comforted me and was there when I needed a mother the most, and when I needed a strong father figure the most. Prophet T.B. Joshua and Pastor Evelyn Joshua were that for me. They helped me get over my depression. They helped me get over my distraction, my feeling of sorrow, depression, and, and you know, every bad feeling you would feel at losing your, someone you love so much. They helped me through that worst time of my life and kept me focused on the goal and my purpose of being there, which was to be like Jesus Christ and to live for Him in truth, in sincerity, and in integrity. So, truly, it was my greatest privilege, honor, and blessing from God Almighty to be a disciple of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Not only did he change my life and point me in the direction of God's calling for my life, but he took care of my needs, my troubles, and my problems all the way along. So what was it like to be a disciple of Prophet T.B. Joshua? What was it like to live at the Synagogue Church of All Nations for over 16 years? There were several things you can describe the Synagogue Church of All Nations as being. Firstly, it was the University of God, training leaders of tomorrow in the things of God, in the way of the Lord, and in the word and instruction of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, it was the arena of liberty, where every day thousands, and I mean thousands, of sick, oppressed, of afflicted, and demonized people came to receive the freedom that is promised in Christ Jesus. Not only that, it was a training ground for soldiers of Christ who would be able to go through the trials of life with the same grace that the apostles we read in the scriptures did. Not only that, it was a place where the poor, the widowed, the needy, the disabled, the disenfranchised, the rejected would come in search of assistance. Some of them didn't even want prayer, they just wanted food, they just wanted money, they just needed help. And Prophet T.B. Joshua never closed his door to any of them. Rather, he saw his contribution to others as an assignment from God. He used to teach us to let love lead. How do you let love lead when sick people come to your gate and you say, no, I want to rest, I want to sleep, I can't be bothered now? That's not love. Love doesn't take a break and love doesn't take a day off. And that was why our work schedule at the Synagogue Church of All Nations was extremely busy. Not only were we there being trained, but we were also there serving God and serving the people of God. And that kind of lifestyle is not easy. Truly, it wasn't easy 
but it was worth it because the satisfaction of knowing we were doing the will of God, we were being part of what God was doing to change people's lives was so satisfying. To encourage us, Prophet T.B. Joshua often said that true fulfillment comes not from the things that we amass, but from doing the will of God. That is where peace and joy that really last come from. To give you an example of how we served the poor, the widows, the orphans, and the disabled. There was a, a very big day where over 300 disabled people came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I mean people who were amputees, people who didn't have both legs or didn't have both arms or were in one way or another disabled and not able to work and walk as you and I and maybe any other person could be. Prophet T.B. Joshua took such compassion on them, he gave them money, he gave them food. Those who didn't have legs and, and were using crude skateboards and slippers to move around with, he gave them wheelchairs to give them a higher level of dignity rather than just mo moving around or ro rolling on the floor as some of them were doing. Prophet T.B. Joshua did what he could to establish a connection with them and once they made that first impact, he made it a regular occurrence where he would invite the physically challenged as we called them and those who were disabled in one way or another to come and receive financial support. He gave scholarships, he gave material clothing, he gave food every single time they came and he gave them huge bags of rice, maybe 50 kilo bags of rice to take home with them when they were going. This was the level of care Prophet T.P. Joshua had for people. There were other examples and I know it reached the news even when um, the whole political upheaval was going on in Libya and there were lots of false arrests and other things going on and deportations taking place. A lot of the deportees of Nigerians who were arrived back in Nigeria having lost everything they built and their home, their house, their life, everything in Libya, they arrived back on the shores of Nigeria with nothing. Prophet T.B. Joshua welcomed them into the church he heard their stories, he listened to their pain, he prayed for those who wanted to receive prayer, because not all of them were Christians. There were Muslims, there were people who just didn't believe in God, but needed help. And Prophet T.B. Joshua was ready to be the hand of help, the hand of love, and the hand of Jesus Christ to these people. He gave them clothes, because most of them came just in the clothes that they wore. He gave them clothing, each person left the church with different sets of clothes, according to what we could provide. He gave them a hot meal on their arrival, gave them bags of rice to take home with them to their families, and paid their transportation home. Some of them went to the far opposite states of Nigeria. Some went to Borno, some went to Kogi, some went to the south. Whatever they needed, Prophet T.B. Joshua provided that for them. And he gave each one of them a gift to take care of themselves when they, when they got home. Some received even more than that, according to their needs and their losses. So these were examples and the people that were deported from Libya, we got a phone call at four o'clock in the morning that they had just turned up at the gate saying they have nowhere else to go. And we didn't say, oh, it's late, send them away, tell them to come back. No, we let love lead and we served them right from four o'clock in the morning until they left in the evening that day. This was the kind of heart, the kind of training and the kind of emphasis Prophet T.B. Joshua had on being a solution to someone in trouble. No matter what level we are in life, someone somewhere is praying to be like us and have what we have. Therefore, even if we can only give a little, we should give that little faithfully unto God, knowing that when we serve people in need, we are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what he taught us. Now this rigorous lifestyle wasn't easy to take for a lot of the disciples and a lot of the workers of the church. But just like in any university, you have those who come out with a first class degree, you have those with a second class upper, you have those who fail and those who drop out. The same was true of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Not everyone had the same heart, the same zeal for serving and had the same purpose of their serving people in need so they can serve Jesus and give thanks to God for giving them the grace to be in this training ground for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you've heard what they have to say in this documentary. Another wonderful thing Prophet T.B. Joshua did to show his heart for giving and his concern for the people was to grant scholarships. And you've seen Yinka Oduwale, who he sponsored all the way up to her PhD in Oxford University, all the way down to local schools and to kindergarten schools in Nigeria. He helped everybody across the board, internationally, locally, and otherwise. 
people that showed promise, that had no means, that had no way, maybe no family or no father to help them, Prophet T.B. Joshua stepped in on behalf of Jesus to bless them and give them scholarships to school, to university, to higher education. I can't actually count how many scholarships he has given out or, how, or even begin to estimate how much money he has given out. I know it is in millions of Naira. And he didn't do this because he owed it to anyone. He did this because this was what Jesus put on his heart to do, to be a solution to people in need. Prophet D.B. Joshua used to say that education is not anointing, but it's still useful. And therefore he not only supported the things of God, but he supported people's education to give them a better life. Believing that the children of today are the leaders of tomorrow. And he wanted to sow good seeds among them, seeds of love, seeds of acceptance, seeds of Christ in their lives that would grow into the harvest as they become the politicians, the leaders, the presidents, the lawyers, the doctors, the, the engineers and electricians of tomorrow. And Prophet T.B. Joshua's concern was not only limited to within the four walls of the Synagogue Church of All Nations or even just to his nation, Nigeria. He developed schools in Pakistan called Emmanuel School. He helped in disaster relief and the hurricane um, that hit Haiti and, the, and various other natural disasters across the world. Prophet T.B. Joshua not only sent resources, sent medical supplies, established field hospitals there, but he sent some of his disciples there in order to serve the local people where people needed help the most and couldn't afford it, couldn't get it any other way. God used them to supply for that need at that time. And their help, the help of the Emmanuel TV team and partners saved lives all over the world. And everything Prophet T.B. Joshua provided was paid for by the Emmanuel TV partnership and by Prophet T.B. Joshua himself. He did not ask any money or collect anything from the people he was helping. He said, I have received from Jesus freely, and so freely I must give in the name of God. Once again, I cannot begin to estimate the amounts that he has given. I, he was doing this even before I got there, but for over 16 and a half years, I know it's over millions and millions of dollars in terms of giving his giving, his charity, and his good works for others. Coming back to what was it like to live under the Synagogue Church of All Nations, I've mentioned about the poor, I've mentioned about the needy. Let me talk a little more about the arena of liberty. This was what Prophet T.B. Joshua called the church, and truly you've seen it every Sunday service, how God Almighty would locate people among the crowd and would bring healing, would bring deliverance, and would bring even words of prophecy to strike the root of problems in their life and solve the spiritual issue that had manifested into the physical. I was intensively trained in what was called the emergency department, which were the people who received those who were sick, those who were coming for prayer, and those who had need of deliverance at the church. I worked there from the first day I arrived until the last day I was there. That was one of my main assignments at the church. And I can tell you, every miracle that took place at the Synagogue Church of All Nations was real, was genuine, and was authentic. To prove the genuineness of some of the miracles, we wouldn't even allow the sick people to be prayed for on the prayer line by Prophet T.B. Joshua unless they had medical evidence of what they were claiming. If they said they had diabetes and needed prayer, we needed to see it on an approved, stamped and signed medical report from a reputable government hospital. The same was true for any other sickness or ailment that came there, from cancer to HIV and so on and so forth. We demanded that the problem was proven to be genuine. When Jesus Christ would touch them and change their life completely, there would be no evidence that there was ever such a problem in their lives. Then we would have proof to show the world that the evidence of Jesus Christ is lives changed. If the millions of this generation are to believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, they have to see proof. And these were the proofs. Miracles, real miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you a picture of what it would be like to serve in that department. We would be at the gate sometimes four o'clock, sometimes five o'clock in the morning to receive the first comers. And the first comers were usually those who were in the worst conditions. Peoples who you could smell coming as they were coming down the street. People with huge cancers, goiters, swellings, and things that were really heartbreaking to see how severe and how, how potentially life-threatening their conditions were. 
We saw open wounds, we saw ulcers, we saw broken bones, we saw bones protruding out of people's skin, body poisoning. There was just, name any condition, you would see it coming to the Synagogue Church of All Nations because they believed Jesus Christ was the healer and he was working and living in the Synagogue Church of All Nations through his word and by his spirit. That was what they believed. They came, he prayed, they received, and they testified to the glory of God. Now, when someone comes to you in that state of mind, they're not coming in a balanced state of mind. They're not coming happy that they have this problem. People are desperate. And it takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy to attend. It takes a lot of patience even, and love and compassion to attend to hundreds, if not up to one or 2,000 people every single service day. And we have more than one service day a week. Sometimes there were three services a week, sometimes there were two, sometimes there was the Sunday service alone in a week as the program changed. But every single time, the need was huge. The attitude was the same, and the attitude of the disciples and workers equally had to be the same. Let love lead, let compassion lead, let patience lead, let goodness lead. We had to listen, to what the problem was and what they believed Jesus Christ could do for them. And then we helped them to be on the prayer line for Prophet TB Joshua to pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Registration for the prayer line was always free of charge. Prophet TB Joshua never received money from anyone to pray for them or for their family member or after the prayer line or in any such way. Money never changed hands when it came to prayer and ministry at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. We followed the pattern Jesus Christ gave his disciples when he sent them out with power over sickness, disease and demons and said, freely you have received, freely give. And that was his motto. That was how we lived. We made God's word the standard for our lives. This would start, like I said, sometimes from four, five o'clock in the morning and it could go on till four, five o'clock in the afternoon until we had attended to everyone as much as we could before the prayer line needed to start and the prophet would come out to pray for them. This, like I said, was a rigorous, demanding job. And yes, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it. When you saw the people that had come crying, you counseled them, you spoke to them, you spoke the word of God to them, and then you saw what God did to them at the prayer line, how they left with smiles on their face, telling you the pain that they felt in the morning, it wasn't there anymore. People that couldn't walk, starting to walk. People with stiff necks, able to turn their neck without any pain. People who were in wheelchairs, being able to stand up or walk by the grace of God. The deaf heard, the blind saw, skin diseases disappeared. All of it happened in the name of Jesus Christ. And every one of those cases was a life changed by Jesus. Every single miracle was a true miracle of the Holy Spirit. As I said, I worked intensively at the prayer line and emergency department, and I saw the worst cases. I saw everything that went on behind the scenes and in front of the camera. And I know there was no arrangement there was no faking, there was no pre-planning, there was no pretense about it. It was genuine, it was real, and it showcased the power and reality of God Almighty Himself. That He is the healer and He still heals all manner of sickness and disease. He is the deliverer and there's no problem God cannot solve. No disease Jesus cannot cure and no sickness Jesus Christ cannot heal. For at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must bow. And not only did we attend to them, but we know receiving a miracle is not as important as maintaining it. So we took a lot of time after people had been prayed for at the prayer line to go through the scriptures with them and to explain and teach them to build them up in the word of God so that when they got home, they would be able to walk in their healing, in their freedom and in their deliverance. Remember, miracles are not magic. It's not like flicking a button and suddenly all the sores have disappeared. Sores that have taken months or years to grow wouldn't just disappear in the blink of an eye, but God supernaturally would heal them. Sometimes it could take weeks, sometimes it could take months, sometimes it took several months, but we would keep in contact with these people, praying with them, encouraging them. Sometimes we would even ask them to come back to the church so we could see them, see how their condition was and take care of them. And we call this follow-up. We would continue to take care of them, not only once they had been prayed for, but we would build them up spiritually with the Word of God to be able to stand and live in their healing and walk in their freedom in Christ Jesus. We would follow up with them to see how they were, 
and we would follow it right through until they could testify to the glory of God. And what do we mean by that? The way God Almighty works His wonders and miracles in our lives differs person to person and case by case. For example, someone that was healed of an ulcer in the arm. On the day they were prayed for, the pain left, but the ulcer was still visible to see. It didn't go in one week or in one day. It took time for the ulcer to slowly close, heal up and be completely gone. But this was a supernatural miracle and supernatural healing enabled by the prayer of Prophet TB Joshua and the ministration at the Synagogue Church for Nations. We would rejoice with them, but we would also ask them to go back to their doctor and get medical verification that they were healed and they were cured. And as part of our counseling to them or our advice to them, we never advised anybody to stop taking their medication or prescribed drugs or treatments that the doctors had asked or ordered them to take for their condition. It was when people had gone back to the hospitals, back to their doctors and confirmed that everything was clean, everything was clear, everything was healed by the power of God, then they would come back and testify to his glory. And that was how we had medical verifications and reports of it. If you look on any of the reports of people that were healed at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, the doctor's name was there, the hospital's name is there, the stamp, the signature, and the date was all there to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that this was a complete healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And one thing I want to point out, they wrongly used a quote of Prophet T.B. Joshua in the BBC documentary that said if you cannot trust God with medicine, then you cannot trust Him without medicine. That actually means that you can use medicine and trust God. It's not how they were portraying it. Another area I want to speak on, this is the work side of being a disciple. What about the discipleship itself and that life? He taught us that you can do nothing without the Word of God because God does nothing without the Word of God. So he went above and beyond in his effort to teach his disciples, to ground us in the Word of God, in faith and in love, so that we could in turn serve people in faith, in truth and in sincerity. This was one of the fundamental beliefs of Prophet T.B. Joshua, of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, and it all comes from the Scripture. So these meetings and Bible studies that Prophet T.B. Joshua held as frequently as he could were only one of the ways in which he poured into the lives of his disciples. Another way was skills development. And this was a very big thing that the Prophet really pushed hard and invested a lot in the life of his disciples. For example, have you ever seen the camera work that goes on at the Synagogue Church of All Nations? It is a very high and professional level of work. That didn't just happen overnight but the Prophet paid professionals to come and train his church members, to come and train his disciples in so many different areas, the sound and audio, the editing, graphic design. I myself was trained as a professional voiceover artist and did a lot of work for Emmanuel TV with a group of other disciples. He paid for professionals to come and train us, teach us how to write, how to read, how to deliver, and to do so many different things. And this progressed into all different areas and all different fields. We had people learning different um, vehicles that they could drive, people in uh, the baking profession, chefs, cooks, uh, restauranteurs, um, maintenance and building development and building projects, you name it, Prophet T.B. Joshua invested skills development in the life of his spiritual children, his disciples. And I know several of these who were, for example, cameramen at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. When they ended their discipleship, they got jobs in local af uh, African television stations like AIT, Africa Independent Television, and Silverbird Television, to name a few. So a lot of the disciples that didn't go on to become prophets, pastors, evangelists, or preachers, they still still used the skills and the training God Almighty gave them through Prophet T.B. Joshua completely free of charge to earn a living and make their way in the world thereafter. Why did Prophet T.B. Joshua do this? Why did he put in so much extra effort, invest so much money, so much time, so much resources into his disciples? Because he believed we were the leaders of tomorrow and he believed that he was sowing seeds into us that would become a harvest in the future for the glory of God and for the kingdom of heaven. So now, I've shared my joyful memories and experiences that I treasure till this day of my time at the Synagogue Church of All Nations with Prophet T.B. Joshua and with my brothers and sisters all over the world, many of whom have spoken out in defense and to stand for the truth of what really happened and what Prophet T.B. Joshua was really like. I have much more to share, but I'll share that at another time. 
Right now, I want to take you to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And this is a kind of rebuke and a warning to those who are in Christ. Pay attention. Matthew 24, from verse 9 in the Passion Translation. It says, You can expect to be persecuted, even killed, for you will be hated by all the nations because of your love for me. This is Jesus speaking. Then many will stop following me and fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. There will be such an increase of sin and lawlessness that those whose hearts once burned with passion for God and others will grow cold. But keep your hope to the end, and you will experience life and deliverance. Yet through it all, this joyful assurance of the realm of heaven's kingdom will be proclaimed all over the world, providing every nation with a demonstration of the reality of God. And after this, the end of this age will arrive. Hallelujah. To conclude this, Jesus is coming soon. And what we've seen in the scripture, we are seeing happen all around us today. The signs of the end time and the end of the age are upon us. And this is Satan's plan and his attack against the church in the last day. The Bible says, for even the elect could be deceived if that were possible. This is just such a time as this. It is time for us as Christians to stand on the Word of God, to stand on the truth of God's Word, and to live by it. Don't be swayed by hearsay, by rumors, by what you hear, by what people tell you, by what you see in the newspaper. Rather, as 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 says, test all things. How do you test them? By the Word of God, through His Spirit. And then hold fast to that which is true, to that which is right. I pray that you would yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Let Him reveal to you the truth about what's been said about Prophet T.B. Joshua, and the happenings at the Synagogue Church of All Nations and the miracles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't be part of this great deception of the end times. Just like Prophet T.B. Joshua said, I encourage you to make God's Word the standard for your life, the standard for your belief, and the standard for your opinion. Don't be quick to hear rumors or gossip and come to a hasty conclusion that you could eventually regret. Take time to let the Spirit of God reveal the truth to you and let that truth set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Emmanuel, God is with us and he is good.